dear friends, it's a great joy that I could interact with you once again through the Word of God. And the title of today's message is, Seven I Am Sayings of My Beloved Jesus. Seven I Am Sayings of My Beloved Jesus. By way of introduction, John, who was leaning on the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ, wrote his gospel, the letters, as well as the book of Revelation. And in his writing, he speaks about a lot of I am sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to place before you just seven I am sayings of Jesus so that we will definitely be benefited. Now, dear friends, when Jesus was talking to the people of his day, the Jewish people, they began to resist his word. And they did not understand the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. They thought he is a young man. He is just a man. They resisted his word. So Jesus said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. We read it in John's Gospel 8 chapter 56 to 59. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not even 50 years old. And have you seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself in and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Dear friends, Jesus was on this earth in human form. He was giving God's word, and the people did not want to believe the truth that he was speaking. He did not say, Before Abraham was, I, I was. He did not say that. He said, Before Abraham was, I am. You know, as Jesus was telling, I am, they got so angry, they tried to stone him, he disappeared out of their own sights. Something supernatural had happened. Now, why did Abraham, when did Abraham see Jesus' day? You know, I look at it this way. God chose Abraham to come out of the Ur of Chaldees from, the, from an idol worship, and he was asked to follow God, and God promised that in his own lineage, he'll bring salvation to the whole world. On Mount Moriah, as Abraham had to offer Isaac, I believe he would have seen Jesus Christ on Golgotha. He would have seen that. So Jesus very clearly said, Abraham longed to see my day and he saw it and was, he was glad. So dear friends, Abraham was able to see the Lord Jesus Christ when he was born as, as Isaac. When Isaac was born, he would have been able to see in his own faith um, vantage point, he would have seen Jesus Christ. So Jesus was able to say, before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus is, I am, an expression of God the Father, who spoke to Moses and, uh, and said, I am that I am. So dear friends, even in Garden of Gethsemane, we see Jesus as a man and also performing himself as a mighty God. When the enemies came to uh, catch him, they, Jesus said, whom do you seek? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I am he. When he declared, I am he, the, the enemies fell down, fell, went back and fell down. And Jesus was again telling, whom do you seek? And they said, we seek Jesus of Nazareth. Then he submitted. He was, I mean, expressing himself as a man and also as I am. So, dear friends, when we understand the I am sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ, they will definitely bring joy in our own hearts. I want to place before you seven I am sayings of Jesus. The first is, I am the light of the world. Second, I am the bread of life. Third, third is, I am the way, the truth and life. Fourth is, I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And fifth is, I am the true wine. And sixth is, I am the resurrection and the life. And seven is, I am Alpha and Omega. Now, I am the light of the world. John's Gospel 8, chapter 12, to us, Jesus spoke to the, them again. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Dear friends, Jesus came into this world that was full of darkness. He declared this. This message that Jesus spoke is from the heart of God. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If a person would want to follow me, he shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So 1 John, first chapter, Fifth verse, the word of God says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him, in him is no darkness at all. God is light. He lives in unapproachable light. But Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, he came into this world and said, I am the light of the world. And people who are not able to see God in that unapproachable light were able to see Jesus Christ. 
So, in, in a limited fashion, we are able to see God in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, a person who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The question is, are you following the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart? If you follow him with all your heart, following is following Jesus very ardently, in, the, in a straight path, following him. When we follow him, we will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The tragedy is many people would want to be in darkness. If you read John's Gospel, 3rd chapter, 19 and 20, and this is the condemnation, cause for condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds are very evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. So, dear friends, when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, we must understand that he is light. When we follow him ardently as we want, as we have to follow, we will definitely not walk in the darkness. We will have the light of life. So we will have the light of life. Jesus spoke to the disciples said, and said, you are the light of the world. Now, the question is, you as a person who is following the Lord Jesus, God wants you to be light in this world, in this dark world. And for that to happen, you must understand Jesus' words, I am the light of the world. When we follow him, you will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The second I am saying that I want to place before you is, I am the bread of life. If you read John's Gospel, 6th chapter, verse 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. What is this bread of life? John's Gospel, 1st chapter, 1 and 14, if you read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh, dwelt amongst us, full of grace and truth. Now, Jesus is the Word. He is the bread. Matthew's Gospel, 4, chapter 4, verse, But he answered and said, Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, dear friends, the Word of God is the bread. Jesus, the incarnated Word, is the bread. So we have the written word in the Bible. We have the written word in the Bible. It's a great blessing that God has given to us. When we read the word of God, the light of the Holy Spirit must fall upon that. If you study about the tabernacle established by Moses, in the holy place, there was a um, table of showbread made of wood and uh, overlaid with gold. Every day, they used to keep 12 loaves of bread representing uh, the 12 types of Israel. 12 loaves of bread, fresh bread will be kept. On the other side, uh, the lampstand will be there, golden lampstand will be there, and seven lamps will be there. And from that lamp, light will be falling upon the bread. So, dear friends, reading God's word and then keeping it in the mind is not what is needed. The word of God must be lightened by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. So reading God's word, going to church and coming alone will not help properly. So what we need to understand is, if we have to have the bread of life, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The word is the bread. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, let the Holy Spirit fall upon the Word of God so that we understand it in the right perspective. It is very sad to see many prosperity gospel preachers perverting the Word of God. The Word of, they are not able to understand that the Word of God must be kept in the right perspective. A sound doctrine must be presented before the people. So, many people are not able to understand the reality of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is always there to help us. He would tell what Jesus told already, there is no revelation beyond the scriptures. Many people say, I am filled by the Holy Spirit, and they begin to prophesy certain things which are not what God wanted us to understand. So, the word of God is very important. The bread of life is important. And we must understand God's word only with the help of the Holy Spirit. So, both must be there so that we will understand that what we have to do in this world. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The third I am saying that I want to place before you is, I am the way, the truth, and life. John's Gospel, 14, chapter 6, verse, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life, when we walk in him, in him, in his path, we will have the truth and also life. Life that begins here and ends in eternity, or rather continues in eternity. So this is what, we, what is needed, friend, friends. And this way is a way of holiness. Many people are not able to understand it. In their own heart, they deviate from the Lord. Well, of course, we have the sinful nature in us. Even after accepting Jesus as a Savior, sinful nature will be there. 
will have to control it by the Holy Spirit on daily basis, by quality prayer and also yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. That is important because without holiness, nobody shall see God. Let me read from here the book of Isaiah, 35th chapter, 8th to 10th verse. And there he speaks about the highway of holiness. A highway shall be there, and the road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for the others. Though the wafering men, though fools, shall not err therein, no lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast go upon it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. With everlasting joy on their heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. So, dear friends, in this path of holiness that God has prepared for us in the whole world as a wilderness, the whole, whole world is as a, like a wilderness, and the path of holiness, ravenous beasts shall not be there, lions shall not be there, evil powers cannot come there. So, it is imperative when we follow the Lord Jesus Christ, we must long for this. He is the way, the truth, and life. When we follow him, we'll be walking in the path of holiness. And we must understand that God has prepared everything for us. And we receive the blessings when we yield our will to him and obey what God wants us to obey. The fourth I am saying that the Lord Jesus Christ told was, I am the door of the sheep, I am the shepherd. John's Gospel 10, chapter, verses 7 and 9. And Jesus said unto them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who, were, who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not follow them. Hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out and find pasture. You know, there are many people who are religious. They try to fall, come to closer to God or they try to come close to God the Father through various means. But Jesus very clearly says, there is only one door. I am the door of the sheep. And people try to enter in by other door. They are, they are thieves. Now, we must understand that the name of Jesus is very important. Jesus is the only way through which we can enter the, enter the fold. So Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. I am the shepherd. He is the shepherd. We are to follow him. He said, I allow the sheep to go out of the pen and I walk before them. My sheep hear my voice. If we understand that Jesus is the door of the sheep, we must be able to follow him with all our hearts. We must be able to hear the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ on daily basis and follow him. The fifth I am saying of the Lord Jesus that I want to place before you is, I am the true vine. If you read John's Gospel 15, chapter verses 1 to 4, Jesus declared, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Jesus said, I am the true vine. God the Father planted a beautiful vine on this earth, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are supposed to be branches. And the word of God says, I am the true vine, you are the branches. And any, any branch that is not able to bring forth fruit, he cuts it off. You know, many people are not able to understand it. We are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people are satisfied with receiving some blessing from the Lord as believers. They are not able to do something that God wants, wanted them to do. So, the purpose of the branch of a, of, a, of a true vine is to bring forth fruit. Now the question is, are you bringing forth fruit unto God? We must be able to bring forth fruit unto God. The nine fruit of the Holy Spirit must be there at least in some measure and also bringing souls into the kingdom of God should be there. Now dear friends, God loves the, lo loved the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves him continuously. And when we come into touch with the Lord Jesus Christ, we become branches and the Lord Jesus continues to love us. As the Father loved the, loved the Lord Jesus Christ, He loves us when we get connected with the Lord Jesus Christ. But what we need to understand is, we have to be disciples, forsake our own self, and follow Him with all our hearts, so that we will be able to bring forth fruit. Abide in the vine by loving Him and obeying Him. Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will bear fruit in your own life. Now the question is, are we able to abide in Him and is his word abiding in us. When we abide in the Lord Jesus Christ by obeying him and loving him, we will become productive in our own life. Dear friends, your, your tree are a plant that should grow and bring forth fruit. Light is needed. 
I mean, the people who study bot botany will understand. Yeah, your tree that grows or a plant that grows longs for the light for photosynthesis. Now, that is called as phototropism, moving towards light. That, that, that is there among the plants. And the roots of the plants, they look for water. And it is called as hydrotropism, looking for water, longing for water. Now, I want to just prepare, a f I have prepared a few, um, coined a few words I want to place before you. Now, usually people of the world, they long for pleasure. I call it pleasurotropism. Or they long for evil, pneurotropism. And also nictotropism, longing for darkness. And also cosmotropism, longing for the things of this world. Now, this is not what is needed. And I coined a few other words that are positive, like hydrotropism and phototropism. We need to develop theotropism, longing for Theo, longing for God. And also Christotropism, longing for the Lord Jesus Christ. And also uh, pneumotropism, longing for the Holy Spirit. God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit are there for us. When you love God with all your heart and love the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you are safe. Your heart will be bubbling with joy. You will have the fellowship with God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I encourage all of you to long for uh, the, this new tropism, theotropism and also Christotropism and pneumatotropism. I tell you, God created the whole cosmos, even plants long to come near light. They long for light. There was a I mean, mine, coal mine, a deep coal mine, and a little seed fell there. That seed, if it sprouts, it will grow usually for just six or ten inches. It's a small plant. But the seed that fell into the mine, it began to look for light. The phototropism was there. It was longing for light. It was able to grow 125 feet and come to the light. Are you longing for God? So Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I am the true vine. You must be able to bring forth fruit. Now, if you are a person who is longing to bring forth fruit, you must understand this. Because without bearing fruit, you cannot enter into heaven. Jesus very clearly says, any branch in me that be bears fruit, I will prune it that it, may bring, that it may bring forth more fruit. Any branch in me that fails to bring forth fruit, I cut it and throw it into the fire. Now, are you a person who is attached to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is connected with the Lord Jesus Christ, longing to bear fruit? The sixth I am saying of the Lord Jesus is, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, in the case of Lazarus who died and he was in the grave for four days, Jesus comes there because of Mary's prayer. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He spoke to Martha and said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Now, when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, when we have Jesus Christ in us, we must understand this re real reality. Jesus, the resurrection and life, is in us. When we come to closer to God and receive him with humility, like St. Paul, we will be in a position to say, I have been crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith and the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. I tell you, my dear friends, when you love God with all your heart and the Lord Jesus Christ and also Holy Spirit with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, you will be able to love yourself rightly and love others also. Now, when you have this love in your own heart, loving the Lord God with all your heart, you will have Jesus in you. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is longing for love. When he longs for love from our own heart, he gave his own life for us. Why not we love him with all our heart? With our own strength, we cannot love. If you read Romans 5th chapter, 5th verse, there the word of God says, the Holy Spirit has come into us. We need not be ashamed because he pours God's love into our own hearts. What we need to have is, we must have love for Jesus and also love of Jesus in our own hearts. So this is very important. When we have this type of love, we will understand that Jesus is resurrection and life. He will be in us. So like St. Paul, we will be in a position to say, I have been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, because Jesus lives in me. Jesus lives in me. You will understand that Jesus gave his life for you because he loves you, because he loved you. So dear friends, the seventh I am saying that I want to place before you is, I am Alpha and Omega. 
Revelation, first chapter, eighth verse. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Look at the beautiful words that God spoke to uh, I mean, John when he was in the Isle of Patmos. So, to make it more clear, Revelation 1st chapter, verses 10 to 18, if you read, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am, under, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. When he turned to see the voice, he saw the Lord Jesus Christ in, in glory. John, who was leaning on the bosom of the Lord Jesus, when he saw the Lord Jesus in ultimate glory, he fell on his face. And the Lord stooped down, touched him and said, Be not afraid, I am the first and last, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of Hades and death, he keys of hell and death. So Jesus is in control of everything. Sometimes, you know, when you go through problems in this world, we are confused and we are baffled. Some people begin to question about the existence of God. We must understand that Jesus is there. He is the beginning and the end. So, dear friends, in conclusion, let me tell you, seven I am sayings of the Lord Jesus I place before you. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and life. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. I am the resurrection and the life. I am Alpha and Omega. Now, dear friends, if you look at the uh, Greek, uh, Greek alphabet, the first letter is Alpha and the last is Omega. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. If you read, uh, if you look at the Hebrew alphabet, um, the, in, he, in Hebrew language, truth is emet. And it consists of three letters, the first letter of Hebrew alphabet, the last letter, and the middle letter, alep, mem, and ta. So it is called emet. The truth covers the whole thing. Jesus is the truth. So in Greek, we, he is, in Greek language, the first letter, last letter, alpha and omega, Jesus is alpha and omega, and all that are in between, the truth, he, it covers everything. You know, this should give you sufficient impetus and also courage to follow the Lord Jesus with all your heart. He is everywhere. He is the beginning and the end. He is resurrection and life. He is alive forevermore. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, dear friends, we must be able to understand that Jesus declares all these things as I am. We need not get confused when we try to live in this world you know, a victorious life. Jesus can help us. So like St. Paul, we must be in a position to say, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Not I, but Christ lives in me. When we have Jesus living in us, we will understand the immensity of this declaration. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The truth emet, it covers everything. There was a young man whose name was uh, Kamal Salim. And he was trained to be a terrorist. He was sent to USA. He was trained how to destroy people, how to kill people. And he was feeling that he was serving his God. In that situation, when he was in States, he met with an accident. And he was on the side of the road. One Christian family came and met him, took him to a hospital, and took care of him in a very nice manner. And when he was convalescing, he was given a house to stay by this Christian family. And he was fascinated. Because he was taught to hate these people, but he found these people, Christians, helping him. And there was a confusion in his own mind about God whom he was worshipping. One day he was praying to God, the uh, God of Abraham, God of Isaac and Jacob. And he was in confusion, why should I kill these people? And as he was praying to God, God of Abraham, Isaac and I, um, Jacob, suddenly the Lord Jesus came to him and said, he appeared before him and said, I come to bless you. And he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord Jesus answered, I am the Alpha and Omega, and all that are in between. I am beginning and end, and all that are in between. My dear friends, I tell you, we had a beginning. We are going to have an end. And Jesus, the beginning and the end, and all that are in between, he is with us. If he is with us, we need not get confused over the problems that we face in this world. Jesus calls us today to come closer to him. You know, what he wants us to do is humbling ourselves, coming closer to him, receiving him in our own hearts. When the Lord Jesus is in our hearts, when I am is in our own hearts, we need not be scared about future. Many people are full of fear, fear of the future, fear of the unknown, fear of eternity, fear of, fear of hell, fear of demons. But when Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and life, is in you, when Alpha and Omega is in you, when he is in you, he will cover everything in your life. 
His presence will be there with you. He will bless you with all the blessings that He prepared for you. So, dear friends, I encourage all of you to understand the great blessing that we can find in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am saying, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth and life. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. I am the resurrection and the life. I am Alpha and Omega. And all that are in between. May these words be a blessing for you. Shall we look to God in prayer? Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and praise you for this joy that you've given to us. What a great joy we can receive by listening to your voice. You are, I am. You are the Son of God who is able to say, I am that I am. So, Lord God, help us to have this great respect for the Word of God. I pray for all these people who heard your word today. And let them come closer to your God. If there are people who have not received Jesus as their Savior, increase them, O oh God, to come closer to you. As the word of God says, you are able to bring them to salvation, O oh God. When a person accepts, accepts you as a Savior, you are able to give them grace to become the children of God. So, Lord, I pray that you may touch everyone. And if there are believers who have been listening to God's word, let them get encouraged by the word of God. Let them be strong in their own spiritual life, O oh Father. And you have given to us one life. Help us to bring forth fruit unto you. As the true vine has to be linked with the vine. Help us to be real as the branches linked to the vine, O oh God. Help us to be linked with you. Help us to bring forth fruit unto thee, O oh God. And let there be fruit of the Holy Spirit. And also help us to bring souls into your own kingdom. There are many people who are dying without salvation who are in the clutches of the devil. Help us to have a deeper prayer life so that we will be able to bring such people into salvation. I give you all the glory, O Lord. I give you all the glory. And help me to serve you till the last breath. In Jesus' almighty name I pray. Amen. Dear friends, you heard the word of God today, the I am sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Spend time in prayer and the Lord will bless you and take you to a higher level. And the purpose for which God has called you will be fulfilled in and through your life. Lord bless you.